All right, welcome back. Let's continue. So, so what do we have up until now? So we wanted to rerun the application, the program, the function. So F11, hold on, let me focus it. F11, 11, F10, F10, F10. Notice that, by the way, I'm actually invoking our function in a loop. This could easily happen in, in your application in case Let's say your your application is a video conferencing application, and your 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 application was 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 built a graph and ran a graph that allowed the user to have a video conference, and the video conference was over. So you tear down the video conference graph, but then the user again goes into a video conference. So again, you put together a graph, maybe the stay, maybe a different graph, but you 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 need to. Think of your application as something that runs basically forever. So you should always tear it down properly. Okay, so F10, up until now, HR is okay. Now F11, this HR we said is a negative number. Let's now go into, right, because we assume or we think or we have an idea that, well, maybe because the file is not there, which I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100% sure, maybe because the file is not there, so we have this exception. So maybe this HR, this negative number, comes to tell us this problem. All right, let's uh, hit F11 and go into throw if error. So F11, F11, so HR for the first time is, a, is less than zero. Okay, so we allocate on the stack the... Um, S Z E R R the string the zero terminating terminated string of characters that we call E R R error. Right, there is a hundred there should be a hundred and sixty characters here, and I, it's uninitialized, so it looks like some sort of um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it could some um, Eastern language I, I I think maybe Chinese Japanese that's because we did not initialize it's never a good idea not to initialize I always try initialize initializing an array completely initializing an array well it's an array so you use braces curly braces and you just initialize any cell or the first cell and the rest are initialized to zero so you set the first to zero and the rest is set also to zero so right button click and X this X that I use is actually the set next is the X under the X which for some reason the Visual Studio by def default or the Windows by default doesn't doesn't show you but this is the X that I use or use control shift F10 this source file has changed. It no longer matches the version of the file used to build the application being debugged. That's correct. Let's try hitting F11. Applying code changes. Code changes were applied successfully. We could also drag the yellow arrow back and this time it worked just fine. I could use also the right button click and X it shouldn't have a problem right button click X it shouldn't have a problem okay so this time an object or name was not found F11 shift F11 that's actually code being um, this is real code this initialization of, of the array of characters and this time Good. They should all be zeros. Very nice. That's a that's that's a good habit to initialize your arrays. All right. Now we're going. Now we're going to invoke the am get error text. This is actually the first time that we're invoking a direct show function. Am um, active movie is the original name. Historically speaking, I think it's the original. Well. As far as I know, it certainly is the previous name. I don't know what the original, original, relatively original name of Direct Cho is Active Movie. So some functions still contain the AM. Some classes, some interfaces, some identifiers in the library still contain the AM. 
acronym. Very nice. So the active. So this is the first, and this actually belongs to the Direct Show library. So this is the first time that we're invoking a Direct Show library function. Very nice. All right. So get error text. So we're, we're passing it this negative number and the pointer, the address of the first cell of the array, we're telling it fill it up with no more than 160 characters as we saw that's the value here. So F11 so result is 32 I guess that's how many characters were, were, were actually planted in the SZERR array. And as you can see this is the string of the error that active movie get error text returned. So this is basically the error that an object or name was not found, which is, I guess it's trying to tell us that the file was not found. It didn't find the file. The object that it's talking about is the file, I guess. All right, but then again, I guess many things, I'm pretty sure with uh, close to 99.98% assurance. Good. All right, so if it were zero, it would have meant that no characters were copied into SZERR, namely AM get error text would have basically failed. So get error text did not fail, so we can skip over um, we can skip over this test, the if, and now we're going to throw this exception. So F11, so we don't have throw CPP, so F11, I guess we cannot use F11, so shift F11 is come out of the F11, and we're finding ourselves back in win main, the yellow arrow is back in win main inside the catch, F11, if P graph is not null, which it is not, so we release and we're finished and finished and finished. But we did not display the error. So maybe we should try and display the error. All right, so um, so let's display the error. But you know, just before we display the error, I did want to discuss with you, right, the HR, uh, there is a nice way, during development at least, to see what these errors mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value, copy it to the tools, and there is the error lookup uh, application. How did this get in here? Is this the same number? With the 970, how did it know that I'm going to look it up? I don't know, but I click look up, message not found. Look up, message not found. That's very strange. Control V, look up, message not found. Usually it works. I see that it turned it into a, um, a hexadecimal based number. I'm assuming that this is the same number. I'm not even sure. Usually it works. In any case, alright, so I would like our application to display errors. Okay, so basically I need to catch the exception. Now I know that we're throwing a string of characters. So this is basically what we're throwing so let's copy this and that's all we want to catch. We don't want to catch anything else and we'd like to display it inside a message box. Now you might say this is very strange. I mean why throw and catch? But this is um, it's, it's good structure. I'm basically used to working like this. When I write my code I have a function that I can invoke from anywhere that just throws exceptions, throws an exception. And from any place I can invoke any function and, and, dis and choose what to do with the exception. Usually I just display the exception. Right, okay, so 
I'd like to display the exception. I'm going to use the message box win32 function. So we need here the original window. We don't have an original window. And we need the actual text, which is S-Z-E-R-R, -R, control space. And we need a caption. So this is going to be our direct show application and this could be zero which means there's just going to be an OK button alright so if again we go back to the beginning right button click and X well let's use F11 right applying code changes there's a problem edit what's the problem what is the problem let's see so message box W cannot convert, right, because we have a what? What do we have? Right, we have a string. We're not allowed to simply use strings. We use the text macro, which decides whether to use a wide character or a non-wide character sequence. Good. So F11, applying code changes, again there is a problem, F8, what's the problem, errors build, uh, build errors occurred, let's see, again, strange, what am I missing, let's use F11, 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 no, it seems to be working just fine, alright. So F11, good, Shift F11, because I find myself over here at the bottom again inside throw, so Shift F11 is just step out of, F11, F11, F10, F11, and we already went into the throw if error, so F, F10, we can just skip over it, and F10, and where is my message box? Why didn't we see a message box? Because it didn't really compile well. Or things have been moved. Maybe F10, maybe. No, no. So let's tear down the process F5. Let, let it run to completion. Oh, it doesn't know. There's a problem with the SZ. Okay, so if I use F6 now, build started, build failed, F8. Message box cannot convert parameter 2 from TCHAR to LPCWSTR. It cannot. This is the problem. This is a problem. The problem is. Cannot convert parameter 2 from TCHAR to LPCWSTR. Let me think about it. Alright, let me try two things. First of all, let me try and use the const keyword over here, F6. And F8, F8, the problem is still in this line, so const doesn't do the job, so maybe we should try simply casting. So it really wants the LPCW, I should use the TSTR if there is such a thing. F12, yeah, there is, right? The T is for, I guess, for the Unicode, right? Because we are in Unicode, so so the W is uh, identical to the T, right? So the T should be used, because T is both, right? T for text, either Unicode or non-Unicode. Let's, F6. And it succeeded. Very nice. All right. So F11, or maybe even F10, 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 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Maybe not so much. What happened this time? Memory location. Break. What did we do again? F10. F10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. No, there's a problem. Oh my god. 
Right, uh, I understand the problem. We'll discuss it in the next lecture because we're running out of, ta out of time. So thank you very much and we'll see you in the next lecture.